We're going to discuss how to solve equations using factoring. This is one of the most common things that we do with the factoring techniques that we've learned so far. At the core of this lies a notion called the zero factor principle, which says that if a, b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Let's take a second and unpack that to see what it really means. Saying a, b equals zero means that we have two things, a and b, whose product, when you multiply them, is zero. What the zero factor principle says is that the only way that can happen is if one of the original things that you were multiplying is equal to zero. In other words, if you take two things that are not zero and you multiply them together, you can never get zero as the result. So if you ever have two things multiplied together and the result is zero, you can always split it into two possibilities. One possibility is that a equals zero and the other possibility is that b equals zero. And we can use this fact to take a single complicated equation and break it into two simple equations, as we'll see in a minute. But before we get to that, let's do a simple example. Suppose we have 6x equals zero. So we're looking at two things, 6 and x, and they are being multiplied together and the result is zero. The zero factor principle says that there are two possibilities from this, either 6 equals 0 or x equals 0. Well, looking at the first option, 6 equals 0 doesn't make any sense. 6 and 0 are not the same number, and so we throw out that possibility. That leaves us with only the second option as a possibility, x equals 0. So the conclusion we would draw is that if 6x equals 0, then x equals 0. Now let's do some slightly more complicated examples. In the first one, we have 2x plus 5 times x minus 3 equals 0. So when we see something equals 0, you should always think about using the zero factor principle. The first thing we need to do is to identify what are the two things that are being multiplied together on the other side. On the one hand, we have 2x plus 5 is one of the things that's being multiplied. And on the other hand, we have x minus 3. So those are playing the role of our a and our b from the zero factor principle. So from this, we can split it up into two possibilities. Either 2x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. So notice, we have taken our single complicated equation up here, and we have turned it into two simple equations. So let's solve them. If we have 2x plus 5 equals 0, we want to get the x by itself. So we subtract 5 from both sides. That leaves us with 2x equals negative 5. And then we divide each side by 2. And so we conclude x equals negative 5 over 2. That's one possible value of x. Now we go over to the second equation, x minus 3 equals 0. Again, we need to get the x by itself. And in this case, all we need to do is add 3 to both sides. And we conclude x equals 3. So there are two solutions to the original equation. x equals negative 5 over 2 is one solution. And x equals 3 is another solution. Now let's look at our second equation, 3x times x minus 6 equals 0. So again, let's first identify what are the things that are being multiplied together here. On the one hand, we have 3x is one of our items that's being multiplied. And on the other hand, we have x minus 6 is another. So we have the 3x that is playing the role of a and the x minus 6 that's playing the role of b. So the zero factor principle says we can split it into two possibilities, either 3x equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0. Now let's solve. In the first case, all we need to do is divide by 3 on each side. 0 divided by 3 is still 0, so x equals 0 is one solution. In the second case, we add 6 to both sides, and we see that x equals 6 
is another solution. So we have two solutions here, x equals 0 or x equals 6. In the previous examples, we were able to go directly to using the zero factor principle to solve our equations. In these two examples, we'll have a little bit of work that we have to do first. In the first equation, we have 6x squared plus 4x equals 0. Now, it might be tempting to try and use the zero factor principle with 6x squared and 4x, but the problem with that is that those two terms are connected with addition and not multiplication. The zero factor principle only works when the two terms are multiplied together, not added or subtracted. What we can do instead is factor the left-hand side of that equation so that we can express it as a multiplication. In this case, our greatest common factor is going to be 2x. So let's factor that out and see what we get. If we factor out a 2x from that expression, we're left with 3x plus 2, and that still equals 0. Notice that now we have our equation expressed as two things being multiplied. We have 2x, which is being multiplied by 3x plus 2. Now we're in a position to apply the zero factor principle. So we split it up. One possibility is that 2x equals 0. The other possibility is that 3x plus 2 equals 0. And now we can solve each individually. In the first case, all we need to do is divide by 2. And we see that x is equal to 0 divided by 2 is still 0. In the second equation, we can subtract 2 from both sides. And we have 3x equals negative 2. And then as a last step, divide both sides by 3. And we're left with x equals negative 2 over 3. And here are our two solutions, x equals 0 x equals negative 2 over 3. Now let's look at the second example. 4x squared equals 20x. Once again, you may be tempted to go straight to the zero factor principle using the 4, which is being multiplied by x squared. The problem in this case is that we don't have 0 on the other side of the equation. The zero factor principle is called that for a reason. That only works when you have a 0 on one side of your equation. To deal with that problem, what we can do is take the 20x that's on the right-hand side and move it over to the left-hand side, and that will give us a 0 on the right-hand side where we need it. To do that, we can subtract 20x from both sides. And so on the right-hand side, 20x minus 20x is 0. On the left-hand side, 4x squared minus 20x those are not like terms, and so we just leave them separate. 4x squared minus 20x. Now we're looking at something similar to the example we did a second ago. What we can do is factor out a common factor from our left-hand side and then use the zero factor principle. In this case, our common factor is 4x, so we will factor that out. And what we're left with is x minus 5 zero. And now, finally, we have all the elements we need for the zero factor principle. Two things being multiplied together, and they are equal zero. So we can split into the two possibilities. One possibility is that 4x equals zero, and the other possibility is x minus 5 equals zero. Well, like we've seen before, if we divide both sides by 4 here, we'll end up with x equals 0 as one solution. And over here, if we add 5 to both sides, we see that x equals 5 is our second solution. So two solutions here, x equals 0, x equals 5.